Hi, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. Thanks so much for joining me. I am going to be sharing how I use this brand new stamp set from Lawn Fawn called Scent with Love and show you three different ideas using all of the images on the stamp set. I didn't use all the sentiments, but I did use all the images. So I've already stamped and die cut them out. I don't normally buy die cuts for a lot of my stamps, but there are some parts in between the skunk and their tails, as well as their little scent, like the heart shaped or the one coming off the side because they're cute little skunks. Um, there are some cutouts inside of the stamped image. So I usually just buy die cuts when I can't do something easy on my scan and cut. So now that those are all stamped, colored, and cut, I'm going to work on my first card. And this card is probably the most detailed. It takes the longest to make, and it is a shutter card. So I'm using my shutter card dies from Lawn Fawn as well as the add-on. So I have my basic set, and then I also have the add-on to make the centerpiece. And I'm going to be adding the For You sentiment on the inside of my shutter card. So I'm going to do all my die cutting off camera, and then we'll start assembling. So here's everything as I was die cutting everything out. I also did the scripty hugs. I cut it once in some watercolor wishes paper and then twice in white and glued them together to create kind of a thicker sentiment. I've die cut the base of my shutter card out of blue, the shutter card or the shutter parts in pink and my center add on in some craft paper because I'm going to be using the latest craft roulette challenge from this past Friday, the 17th, um, to use as, as inspiration for this card. So there were four parameters. Um, one of them was that it had to be a gate card. So perfect to use my shutter card dies. It also had to incorporate blue and green plus one other color. And that does not include neutrals. So I, my one other color is, um, pink, <laughs> lots of pink. And then I'm using a lot of neutrals. So like my brown and black and white, and then I also had to include something in or under the tree. So that's why my center of my shutter card, I'm using some die cuts to create it to look like a tree. And then I will have my images under my tree. And then finally, you have to have something tied. So I will be using some twine later on. So for my center piece, because I'm you know, making it look like a tree. I cut it out of some craft paper and I'm using some distress oxide inks and just creating some shadow and dimension on the card by doing some distress blending as well as some splattering just to give it some unique look like you would see on a tree. I'm going to set those aside to dry while I add some metallic splatter to my pink pieces. So this is the shutter part as well as the band or the belt that goes around my card once it's closed. And I'm just using some pink metallic watercolor to splatter on. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to pick up excess water. And then I will set these aside to dry as well. So now we could start kind of assembling everything. I die cut my tree top, as you can see here, using the shutter die, that center rectangle, as well as a cloud border. And that was used to create my little tree top. And then I'm going to add the For You sentiment, which was die cut out of white paper, to the center of my card, which will be seen when the shutter opens. So I'm placing the top of my tree just so I can make sure I'm not going to accidentally cover my sentiment. So there we have For You in the center of that brown piece, which will be glued directly to the inside of my card. But let's start assembling. So I've die cut this out of some blue cardstock, and I accidentally got a little splatter on it when I was splattering which was kind of a bummer <laughs> but I also die cut some of clouds so I don't know if you saw those earlier I used the on the cloud stamp set and um, I'm going to use those to cover that weird wonky spot that I think I got while splattering I'm not really sure what happened there <laughs> Um, and then it took me quite a while to figure out how to put the shutter card together. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not doing this right. So then I remembered, oh, that's right. You put it in the corner, you fold it over and it picks up the glue. There we go. <laughs> so I'm die or I'm gluing on my two shutter pieces. So I did the left and I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the right, making sure that they are lined up and overlap correctly based on Lawn Fawn's instructions for this die. 
So I found that my card was kind of sideways. Um, the two flaps overlap more on the bottom than on the top. So I'm just going to use my bone folder and just try to fix those creases so they meet in the center on the top and bottom without any major overlapping. And then I will work on adding in my center piece. So I'm going to glue down my center piece here on the bottom only. So for adhering these pieces, I'm using a little bit of um, tape, adhesive tape. What am I thinking? Double-sided tape. And then also a little bit of wet glue. I don't know why I'm paranoid about these cards falling apart, but I am. So having two, two layers of glue there I think is good. And then I'm going to lay down that centerpiece flat and then glue on the inside circle. So that's going to be on the inside and will be revealed when the shutter opens. So now I can glue down the top part. So again, adding glue and my tape adhesive first, then adding glue. I will layer the shutter pieces on the inside, making sure to overlap them correctly and then glue that down. So now I have my inner part of my shutter card complete and I can continue decorating. So to finish my tree, I'm going to glue that tree top and then it will be glued to the very top. But I wanna make sure I don't have any glue where the circle opening is. So I'm just being careful when applying that glue and adhering that to create my little tree. It's an awkward looking tree, but it's fine, it's cute. And then I also die cut some grass. So I'm going to adhere that to the inside of my card. So I created some grass using that same center die cut. So it had that really cute stitching all around the center. And then I also trimmed some extra borders to have grass on the rest of my card to create more of a scene on the inside. So I'm going to use some wet glue and adhere the grass down to the inside. So at first I thought, well, let me score it because I want it to be seamless. And I scored where the gate fold of my shutter card should be. And I glued that down, but the more I played with it, the pieces popped up as you'll see here in just a second. So then I'm going to actually grab a precision craft knife and just cut it. <laughs> I should have just done two separate pieces and I will do that on the right side, but I really wanted this to work, but I thought the more I played with it, the more I was worried it wasn't going to work. So let's just be safe and sorry. And I just trimmed it down. And it doesn't really look too bad. I guess you could see a little bit of blue in between those two pieces. See, it just totally came up. Um, but in, at the end, I think it looks really cute and it's not very noticeable that there is a cut between the two. So I use my precision knife just to help guide where it should be cut. I didn't want to cut all the way through the card. So I just did a, a small cut and then used my scissors to make the actual cut. So you can see there's a little bit of blue exposed. It's really not that bad. I really could go in with like a green marker and color it in, but it's fine. Okay, so now I want to decorate the outside with some of my basic die cuts here. So. The shutter card comes with a panel die and I die cut two panels out of some watercolor wishes paper from Lawn Fawn. I think that's what it's called. I will have everything listed down below in the description because um, sometimes I forget the names of things. So I glued on both panels to the front and there we have the basic of our shutter card and now I want to add in my cute little images. So. Um, because I used the hug sentiment, I definitely wanted to have my skunks hugging in the center. And now I'm going to glue in some clouds in just various spots on both sides of my shutter card to hide that weird spot that I don't know where it came from. And just to add a little bit more to my scene and make it seem like it's kind of endless, it goes off the edges. So now I will glue my skunks under the tree like the craft roulette, um, parameter and then I'm going to add some flowers in various spots on the grass as well as the tree and so I'm just going to lay those down where I think I want them and then use a jewel picker and wet glue to glue them down. So now that my clouds are definitely dry and adhered I'm just using some big scissors to trim off the excess and then the inside part of my card is complete. And I absolutely love it how it turned out. I think it's really cute. So now we're going to work on the band. So I'm grabbing those two pieces that I die cut and splattered with some metallic watercolor. I'm going to repeat the same process like I did for inside the card. 
laid down a strip of double-sided adhesive and then some little wet or uh, some wet glue and glue half of the belly band together so that my front or back side doesn't really matter is glued I'm gonna wrap it around because it is kind of a thick card I don't want to assume that the thickness is going to be perfect and lined up to the score lines from the die cut so I'm adding my glue and then I'm gonna place my card inside and then wrap my band so that way I know it's snug enough to keep my card closed but loose enough to slide on and off without any major issues so there is my hugs sentiment but it felt a little sad and lonely on my band so I die cut some black pearlescent paper that I've had in my stash forever and then I cut some twine and I'm going to wrap it around the band as well at first I thought I was going to do a little bow so that's why you see it there in a bow but I'm going to wrap it around first so I'm going to use some mint tape to help me hold my twine in place just so that way I know it's um, even like on the left and right pretty much and then I can wrap it around so I want to glue my black circle on first I'm just adding glue to the center so that way I can add it to the center of my band and without worrying about getting any glue on my card which I probably could have just taken the band off and done this but I liked having the thickness of my card in there so I knew exactly um, how to tie my little bow so I tied it around created a bow and I fast forwarded because I messed with it a lot it took me a while to get a tight bow um, all by myself I should have asked someone to put their finger <laughs> on the knot for me so I could tie a bow but uh, it's done so I lowered it a little I was going to do it centered but then with the sentiment about above the bow it looked kind of weird centered so I brought the bow down a little bit and then I'm just going to use a glue dot and I'm just going to secure the bow to that glue dot onto the black card stock. And now I don't have to worry about it moving around too much. Here is my hugs sentiment. I'm going to add some glue to anywhere where it will overlap onto the black circle. And then I will glue that down to my band of my card. And it's kind of off to the side, which I think is cute. And it just looks really fun so it's a cute little hugs sentiment on my band and then when you open up the card uh, you can see the cute little skunks inside hugging which is perfect for the sentiment and then it says for you so hugs for you isn't this a cute little card I love the parameters this week for craft roulette this card is a bit detailed but it was really fun to make so that is my first idea so my second idea, I'm going to be using the Lawn Fanatics Challenge, which is currently a sketch challenge to design my card. I die cut a bunch of hearts. Now, I these are from Heffy Doodle. They're not Lawn Fawn, um, mostly because I don't have the money to buy basic shapes at every single company. So I'm using the hearts that I have. I'm going to be using some polka dot in the dark. It's a really cute heart pattern on some, I wouldn't say black, but more of like a really dark gray color so I die cut that using my largest stitched rectangle and then I'm gonna um, just layer these hearts I die cut seven red hearts or pink hearts and um, just gonna layer them on my background so that it matches the sketch challenge um, as best as possible I know it's open to interpretation but I liked how the stars were laid out in the sketch so I wanted to create the same look with my hearts so I used some scratch paper because I didn't want to get glue on my mat, which I'm glad I did as you saw, it got stuck. And once my hearts were dry, I'm just going to cut off all the excess and there I have my background. So I have some sentiment stock from Pear Blossom Press. This stuff is so awesome. It's like a true black. It's super thick and great for embossing on. So I'm going to grab a sheet of that and then I'm using my longest simple wavy banner to create my sentiment. So I'm just going to trim off. I am very frugal with my sentiment stock um, because it's so nice. I don't want to just willy-nilly use it so I trimmed a strip that I knew would fit my banner die and now I'm going to work on aligning my sentiment to fit the banner die and I'm just going to use a clear block and then use the edge of the die to help me curve my sentiment it doesn't end up perfect the first time so I kind of fast forward I just do my best and I hold it up and make sure I'm using a clear block with my clear stamp so that way I can see and make sure that my sentiment will curve with my 
die cut. So I started the process of embossing and right here is when I realized, wait a minute, I should die cut that first. So I ran my piece of the die cut, added some more anti-static powder, and then I'm inking up my sentiment with Versamark so I can emboss. I'm stamping it as centered as I can onto my strip. And then I will grab my white embossing powder. This is a detail embossing powder from Ink on 3 Arctic White. These are my go-to because they are ultra fine. And I'm going to apply that to my sentiment and then use my heat gun to melt that down and create a really nice white embossed sentiment on some black cardstock, which I think will match really well with my background and my cute little skunk. So I'm using a Swiffer cloth just to wipe off any powder on my desk, as well as any excess powder on my little wavy banner. So now I am going to play with the placement of my images. Like I said, I'm trying to use all of my images on these three cards and I wasn't really sure how I was going to use the banner. I thought I was going to use it on this second card, but I didn't like it. So I opened up my first card and I was like, wait, it would look so cute underneath that circle. So I'm going to glue that in in just a little bit. So now that I have what sentiment or sorry, what images I want to use on this card, I can start gluing everything together. So I'm going to use a foam strip to glue down my sentiment. So I'm just using some super thin foam strips from scrapbook.com and I'm going to peel off the release paper and put it onto my card. Now the sentiment is a little wider than my A2 card, but honestly I think this is probably going to go to my husband. So um, instead of gifting it for or selling it for someone else to give. Um, so it's fine because I probably won't even put it in an envelope. So depending on what kind of envelope you have, if you're going to have your sentiment strip stick off the edges, you might need to make your own or just gift it without an envelope. And now I'm going to work on gluing my images. So my skunk on the left is going to have a little flower as well as my little letter with the XOXO sentiment from the set stamped onto it. So I'm just gluing these together and then I will add foam squares to the back of everything, peel off the release paper, and then I'm going to put it on my card. I'm going to use my skunk on the right just to help make sure everything looks centered, my whole image. because I know there's a little bit more on the left than the right but I wanted to keep my images centered so it's a little more pleasing to the eye, at least for me. I'm gonna glue the little bow on my skunk on the right and then I will use some foam squares again to pop this one up and I will glue that onto the right. And finally, I'm going to just use some wet glue and glue this cute little heart stink thing. I don't know what you would call that, stink cloud. Coming up from the center, I just thought it was really cute. It could come from the rose, but also it could just be a cute little love smell from our skunks. And then I realized I didn't have a place for that cute little heart from the stamp set, so I'm just going to glue it directly to my skunk on the right. I'm going to put it in its hand so that way it looks like they're exchanging something. So maybe the skunk on the right is giving away her heart to the skunk on the left with um, all of his Valentine presents. So I'm going to clean up my desk while that dries and I'm going to go ahead and glue that little banner onto my shutter card. I'm adding some wet glue and then just using my finger to tap some of it up because I know that it is really close to the shutter part of my card and I don't want to get any extra glue seeping out so something gets stuck that shouldn't be stuck. So there we go. That shutter card is done again and then I'm going to glue my card for my second card here onto a card base. So just using some wet glue and a top folding A2 size card, I'm adhering those together. And then I wanted to add a little bit of shine to this card because I didn't do any splatter or anything. So I'm going to grab my Pops of Color. It's a clear, it's called Glitter Snowflake. It's a clear um, embellishment with really pretty glitter inside. So I'm just going to fill in my little heart stink bubble thing with some of this um, Pops of Color. So now my second card is done. For my third and final card, this one will be probably the simplest of all of them. I'm going to be using my heart's background die that was just released and I die cut it out of some pink cardstock and then the XOXO sentiment out of some sparkle cardstock in the, um, the white color. So now I'm going to be using my dies to create a shaker card. I have my card base already cut out because my shaker part is going to be in between my card base and this heart panel. 
So I'm going to be using some um, Heffy Doodle foam strips. They create a foam strip that's super thick and great for shakers. And I just outlined the edge of my card. I also added some eighth of an inch um, double-sided adhesive. Why I keep forgetting the name of that, I don't know. To the back of my pink die cut. And I added some acetate to the back of that. I'm just trimming off some excess acetate as I trimmed it a little bit larger than I needed. As you can see, that's how my shaker is going to layer. So I'm gonna peel up all the release paper from that foam and I have this sequin mix. I honestly have no idea who made it or where it came from. Uh, I think it might actually be some extras too combined. And so they're just pink and red and white sequins as well as some metallic pink. And I added some clear seed beads in there just to help my shaker move around. Um, so all those sequins move around in my shaker. And then I glued the top of my shaker to the front. So the reason why I added so much and added these rando sequins is because I know not a lot is going to be visible. So I'm okay with using some sequins that aren't my sparkle blends basically in this type of shaker. So now I've added some foam strips to the back of my XOXO. I peeled off the release paper and I'm gonna just kind of roughly place my images so I have an idea of where my sentiment will be going. I wanna center it and make sure I have some room for my images. So I'm gonna use my grid mat to help me center that XOXO. I have a hard time picturing the center of it. So using my grid mat just helps me make sure it's as centered as possible. So now that that XO is glued down, I'm going to start using some foam squares to the back of my images. So I have my cute little skunk, which I'm going to have him go in the middle. Then I have my little box of, I'm assuming, chocolates on the left, and then my other little smell bubble. I don't know what those are called, stink bubbles, coming out the other side. And I'm going to add that same pops of color in that glitter just to add a little bit more to my um, little smell trail. <laughs> I also grab this really pretty color, pops of color. I believe it's called cherry pie, but again, everything will be listed below. And I'm just adding two sets of three to add a little more color to the front of my card, and I'm just tapping the back to help dome out those little pops of color. And I wanted to share this sound. because it's always fun to hear a shaker card. So here are our final look at all my cards. So I have my XOXO shaker card, my sentimental sketch challenge card, and my hugs shutter card inspired by craft roulette parameters. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing all three of these come together. Let's take a closer look at my card. So here is a a picture of all three. I tried my best to <laughs> cram them in there. Here is my shutter card with my hugs sentiment on the outside. Here's a look at the inside with those cute skunks hugging. My sentimental <laughs> skunk valentines exchanging gifts. And finally, my skunk shaker card. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.